In the year 2008, when I was 14 years old, I flew overseas for the first time. And it's my favourite building. My destination, Nepal. Little did I know at the time, but this would be the first of many trips to Nepal for me, each one special in its own unique way. But on this particular trip, I'd be heading over with a small group of teenagers to connect with an orphanage that my church was supporting. The coming videos in this series will showcase some of the great experiences we got to share, like playing soccer and painting with the kids, exploring inside and outside of Kathmandu, and even going on a safari in Chitwan. I wonder if an elephant would stand a chance against a rhino. Now when we weren't at Saviour's Children's Home hanging out with the kids, chances are we were on the road to one of Nepal's many amazing must-see locations. I can remember piling into our van for an eight-hour road trip from Kathmandu to Chitwan because of traffic and uh, road conditions. I had the very back seat all to myself and I was blasting through the fire and flames, Operation Ground and Pound and Valley of the Damned by Dragon Force as we drove kilometre after kilometre of treacherous cliffside road. <laughs> oh, <it's falling. laughs> I had nearly stepped on my foot. In episode one, I might have said that uh, I always felt safe on the roads in Nepal, all things considered, uh, considering all the chaos and mayhem that was uh, going around uh, around me. But uh, I might walk that back just a bit because some of the overtakes and cornering I witnessed on that long drive in the countryside was jaw-dropping. Unfortunately for the video, it seems I was vibing too hard at the time for my music and uh, didn't film any of it. So let's fast forward to Chitwan, and specifically Chitwan National Park. It's so scruffy. I know. <laughs> oh, it's coming back. It's so surprising. Trying to balance. <laughs> oh, I can do it. It's gonna stop. <laughs> it was here we got to enjoy canoeing down a river home to mugger crocodiles and riding elephants on a safari like experience. Our accommodation was actually quite nice. Uh, I can remember having to use mosquito nets because I'm pretty sure at the time the mosquitoes were pretty bitey. We'd be so busy actually doing stuff that we wouldn't get a chance to spend much time in these rooms anyway. Looking back though, we can only hope that those were happy elephants that we were riding. I do remember, however, being absolutely thrilled by the whole experience, and we even managed to see tons of beautiful rhinos. Oh, it's 
I wonder if an elephant would stand a chance against a rhino. Yeah. You could take it off. Turn while we're on it. Oh, Look at this one. Oh, it's so cool how like made a bomb one. Oh. Look how close it is. Oh. Oh. So cool. <laughs> I like high-fived an elephant. I'm pretty sure it was on this trip as well where we got a chance to bathe and swim with the elephants while they were being hosed down and cleaned after carrying us on, on our tour. Thinking back on that now though, it does seem like it could have gone pretty badly. <laughs> From there, it was back on the road to Pokhara, a beautiful city on Fuar Lake and the gateway to the Annapurna circuit. Now I'm pretty sure from Pokhara we went on a two or three day hike on a densely forested part of the Annapurna circuit. I can remember the many cable bridge crossings and the roar of the Rocky River Rapids below. What's your longest trip you've ever taken? Uh, the one from... This is also a great chance for me to introduce our amazing guide for all of these tours, Sonam. On most of my return trips, we would link up again and again for our hikes, even developing a strong relationship and meeting his family. If you're watching this, Sonam, thanks so much for all the incredible moments you shared with us. You are an amazing dude. The last thing I remember about the hike was the weather turning on us, making a 1,000 step climb too dangerous to begin. We were so close as well, our guest house was just across the river from the bottom of the steps. So I just stayed inside and played this game I learnt, which I'm pretty sure was called like Bag Child or Baga Child or something like that. It was a tiger moving game where you'd have to move tigers and, and goats around the board and try and win on a very, very small playing surface. I like to think I got pretty good at it as well, and I brought home a number of different portable versions of the game to play when I was back in Australia. Now I'm pretty sure it was on this trip as well that we kayaked out to the Tal Barahi Temple, which is a two-story pagoda on a little island in Lake Fewer, back in Pokhara. I'll admit, my trip to Nepal is kind of blurred together though, so it might have been on a later trip. Back in Kathmandu, we also visited one of my favourite spots in the city, Swayambunath. And I would also like to mention here, apologies for a number of my pronunciations along the way. I'm trying my best. <laughs> While it's amongst the oldest religious sites in Nepal, at the time I'm pretty sure I was just calling it Monkey Temple. Because of all the monkeys, as you'll see, and uh, I guess the fact that it also was like a temple. <laughs> Namaste. <laughs> Namaste. It was heartbreaking to see the beggars who would wait at the bottom of the steep stairway to the top, uh, in contrast with the many market stalls that lined the path on the other side. Young entrepreneurs would also strike up conversations to offer their services as guides, or maybe even just to practice their English. So how old are you? I'm 13. 13? And how old are you? 15. Ah. So when did you stop going to school? How old are you? I'm 16. So my back is Oh, you should go to school. Should we follow? Yeah. Where do you go to school? The school? Private. Private school. I thought so. Very good. Up top, there's a Tibetan monastery, a museum, a library, and some shops as well. Hey, Annie. Are you tired? Yeah. On a later trip, Mum and I would buy some stunning artworks from up here. I'd spin prayer wheels, enjoy the flapping of the prayer flags in the sky, protect my belongings from the cheeky monkeys, and of course, take in the breathtaking view of Kathmandu. And just like that, my three-part series on Nepal in 2008 is done.
I haven't laughed as hard as I've laughed at some of the moments that appeared during these videos, uh, mostly to do with my horrible camera work and some of the uh, hilarious, cringy, awkward, squeaky comments I made. <laughs> I would like to take this time to say a huge, huge, massive thank you to my mum and dad who made having these experiences overseas and uh, having these eye-opening and life-changing moments a possibility for me. If I ever feel like I'm not the luckiest person in the entire world, I'll come back and watch these videos again and again. Thanks so much for watching. See you later.